Welcome again, Virgo. Dadici here with the June forecast. I'm from astrology.com.au. Great to have your company. And uh, interestingly, this is a good month. I'm glad to be able to be the, uh, um, the bringer of good news to you this month at least. And uh, why I say that is the Sun and Mars both transiting very powerfully in the upper part of your horoscope. This part of your horoscope has a lot to do with the issue of work, career, and usually uh, th these two planets give you the, the requisite drive to not only get your work done, but to make a pretty damn good impression on the people that you're working for right now. Now, if that wasn't enough, we see also your ruling planet Mercury transiting right now in the upper part as well, but in the ninth house and ready to move across into its domicile, its uh, sign that it rules, which is Gemini, your 10th house of career. And we see that taking place on June 7th. So that's pretty good. And also um, what takes place at that time around the 9th is the uh, full moon in your fourth house of domestic affairs. Um, now that's not quite as bedazzling to me because uh, we see the continuing and some might say lingering transit of Saturn. And Saturn's a mixed planet for you, but you know, when it's transiting the fourth, fourth house, it can bring with it some type of uh, somber feeling, sort of a bluesy type of feeling. And that's why I said to you, it's really great to see that you have the upper part of your horoscope well tenanted by the Sun and Mars, and then by Mercury on the 9th, or rather the 7th. Um, and you're going to need that because uh, after that, when this full moon takes place, I think it's going to shine a light on some family matters. And in particular, it's uh, said in some of the ancient Hindu scriptures that the transit of the moon in the fourth house is not particularly good on some levels. It actually gains directional strength. So it's good on one level, but so let's put it this way. You may actually have a reasonably good relationship with mother during this time, but mother herself may be having a difficult time. This is because of the proximity of the moon, even if it's not on the exact day of the, the full moon, that it will be moving into the conjunction of Saturn over that couple of days. So that's the 9th, the 10th and the 11th. They're the dates to watch out for issues relating to mother, the matriarchal lineage, and uh, even older females in your family. And that's also evidenced by Saturn, which is considered an old planet. So all of that stuff is quite interesting. Hopefully you'll be able to balance that. We see also the additional responsibility that's going to come uh, later in the month around the 15th when Sun moves into the opposition aspect of Saturn. Now that can bring responsibility both in your work, but also uh, being uh, an opposition to that Saturn in the fourth house and then having the, the uh, full moon there. Uh, it's showing that perhaps there's a little too much responsibility coming from all directions around the middle of the month. It's a different picture later in the month, just uh, speaking about the um, the uh, moon. It has uh, it has its new moon in the sign of Cancer, which is your social area, also profitability areas. And don't forget, I mentioned that Mars will move out of your tenth house around the fifth. So this new moon is going to take place on the twenty fourth, um, and it's going to pass across uh, Mars, and that's going to activate your social life and also the profitability. So what we saw earlier in the month for you, Virgo has everything to do with the push, that drive for your profession, opportunities, the additional responsibilities. But judging from this new moon, it's, it's probably a new source of income for business people looking to crack new markets. Uh, this can give you the opportunity to make some great headway in that, in that area of your life. Haven't talked much about your relationships. Neptune's been there and will continue to be there for years. So these are the slower cycles. But judging from Jupiter, which is the co-ruler of your uh, your uh, relationship, sorry, uh, Jupiter actually is in your second house, the place of family and also income. But the important point to note is that on the 9th, 
jumping back earlier in the month, it goes forward again and has a very nice aspect at the outset of the month from, from uh, the sun, which uh, first, second, third is very, very nice for you. It brings um, some opportunity to connect with your partner spiritually from what I can see there. And that's important too. It's not enough to, you know, have the sexual thing down pat. You know, when all the gloss wears off the relationship, you want to make sure that you've got something deeper there, a stronger foundation between you and the other person that is going to endure and carry you into the future, I dare say. So I like the, uh, the aspects of the sun to Jupiter. I like the, uh, the position that it's in right now. Its forward movement is very good if there's been some... Um, apprehension or procrastination on the part of someone if for example you're in that age bracket where you're planning to marry there might have been delays in that area or delays surrounding the the event the engagement but this is nice it is also very good for your work having that uh, transit trining from the sun to that planet in the second house so this is all great for income and it's nice to see that this month will afford you some opportunities particularly in your working life don't feel as if you have to be the martyr though and serve uh, all and sundry. Serve yourself a little bit as well and uh, come out of this unscathed. Don't forget, take a look at the um, monthly and yearly forecasts we have at astrology.com.au. They're more detailed. I'm just skimming the surface here, folks. And I do hope to uh, see you here again next month. Till then, take care. Bye-bye now, Virgo.